What's happening guys? Tampa 2014 and today we have a speaker coming all the way from Sydney, Australia. A truly amazing guy. He was a speaker at the Melbourne 2012 21 Convention and also featured on the 21 Convention podcast. He does corporate coaching. He's also the founder of the School of Attraction, an NLP practitioner. Let's all welcome Damien Dika. What's up, man? Cheers, buddy. Yeah, yeah you got, you got it. it. All right, guys. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hey, that's better. Um, as you probably can guess already within 10 seconds, I'm from Australia. I came here in a plane five days ago, and there are two things that I love about the States. The first is the way that girls respond to my accent. That's pretty kick-ass. The second thing is the food. When I come to America, you guys have some wicked food here. And, and two days ago, I had what can only be described as the best hamburger that I have had in my entire life. And if you think about a hamburger, there's a lot of parts that make a hamburger incredible. Okay? The first thing, guys, is the buns. <laughs> Not these buns, though. These buns are just to keep you paying attention. I'm talking about, uh, hello, yes, these buns. These buns, they were, they were not too dry. They weren't too oily. They were just like melted in your mouth. You could eat these buns by themselves with nothing else. The meat patties, the vegetables they used, everything was fresh. It was just so juicy. Every single little bite was amazing. And as I tell this story, I would be amazed if there was a single person in this room right now thinking that I maybe was talking about a McDonald's burger. Why? McDonald's do not make the nicest burgers. McDonald's do not have the greatest ambience. McDonald's burgers are not very good for your health. They're not very fresh. But they sell more hamburgers than every other hamburger chain in the world. So think about this for a second. McDonald's, shitty burgers, shitty ambience, crap for your health, sells like wildfire. This is like a guy who's not very good looking at all, has a horrible personality, and has every, more women in the world chasing after him than every other guy alive. So the question that I want to pose to everyone here today is, what can McDonald's teach you about getting better with women? You see, everyone here, they know me as a dating coach. But one thing you should also know is that I'm a businessman. I run a very successful dating coaching business in Australia, a business that is next year going worldwide. I do a lot of corporate speaking events. And at these events, what do I do? Well, I teach people what about dating, pickup, and relationships should be brought to the land of sales or to the land of marketing or the land of business. What important lessons are they missing along the way? But today, today, I want to do the very opposite. Today, I'm going to talk to you about what vital lessons you need to know from the corporate world that's going to make you a lot more successful with women. Now, there's an experience that I have that I love in this world. And that's when someone says something to me about something that I'm struggling with. And it's so profound because it's so simple and so obvious that it makes me feel foolish that I had not in fact ever heard it before. And I like it when I hear advice like this because when I get feedback like this in an area of my life and they say something to me and I think, God damn, why didn't I think of that? Of course. That means I'm about to turn a very important corner in my life. So that's what I want to do to you all today. What I want to do today is I want to make you all feel like, God damn it, why didn't I think of that? Because what I'm going to tell you, to some degree, is obvious. You're going to see it, and you're like, yeah, that makes sense. Of course, well, duh. I mean, let me ask you in this room, who here, I saw some hands before, who here has had the experience of trying to get better with women, but not getting nearly as far as I'd like to, in spite of some good effort put in? Yeah. And so the, what? Why didn't I think of that moment I want you to have is why that hasn't been happening 
for you. That's the impact that I want to have today. Now, what I'm going to be talking about, guys, is mathematical, scientifically tested, hyper-rational, and therefore it's going to appeal to most of the men in this room. So let's get started. What do we have to do? What do we have to do? Well, the first thing that we have to do is we have to measure. And this is an interesting, this is an interesting idea. And no, I don't mean like measure. Most of men in this room have done that. But what I mean is we have to know where we are. If I were to ask everyone in this room, if I were to ask you, how successful are you with women right now? And you had to tell me, have a, have a think for a second and, and say 10 words. How successful are you right now with women? And I want, I want one of you to get, at least one of you to give me an answer. Someone give me an answer. And I get to uh, see if you've got a mic. Someone give me an answer. How successful are you with women? 10 words or less. Ooh. Yes, sir, at the back. Ooh, lovely. All right, that's an answer, not a... Uh, cool. How successful are you with women? Someone else, tell me. How successful are you with women? Good or bad? Mmm, I like it. We've got, we've got two very satisfied customers. You had a room full of guys who wanted to be better with women. Ah, ha, you don't like to be picked on in this area, do you? See, what I find is that most guys, most guys, they limit themselves to a couple of ways of thinking when they think about their success. It's kind of a little bit like this spectrum. On the one end of the spectrum, you've got, I suck. And you've got the guys who think, oh, not great. And you've got guys who say, oh, I'm doing okay. It's not too bad. And you've got guys who say, sorry, I couldn't hear you over all the sex. <laughs> but invariably, we don't really measure much else. All right? Not a single person here uh, has told me any numbers any statistics, any conversion rates. In fact, I would, be, I would fall over backwards if anyone in this room could do that. The most we got was I'm dating the number of women, roughly, that I'd like to be dating. That's the closest we got. Now, I want to talk to you about the importance. I want to play a little, little mind game, a little analogy here. Uh, analogies are fantastic for coaching. They are not fantastic for explaining to your girlfriend why she's wrong. Um, I have made that mistake. But since we're coaching, I'm not telling my girlfriend she's wrong. Let's go on. Um, imagine that you and a friend here, you're in these little sailboats. And uh, you have a competition. The first man to the Dominican Republic gets to spend a week piling it up with hot Caribbean women. Does everyone here like the idea of hot Caribbean women? Two hands, three hands. Wow, you'll, I'm going alone then. Um, so they go down there. This is the idea. You've got a race there, the first one there. But the problem is you don't know where you are. You see, you're somewhere inside of that red circle there. So your friend does what 99% of guys do. They go, well, I'll just kind of head off in a direction, and the second I, second I reach some sort of landmark, I'll change directions when I need to. That's what he does. Goes east, figures that's a safe direction. It's going to be land somewhere east. He ends up in Miami. He's like, what up, Miami? He's like, by the way, do you know what Dominican Republic is? Like, yeah, yeah, yo, man, it's down that way. So he travels for two weeks to get to Miami, another 10 days to get to, to Dominican Republic. You, on the other hand, you're smarter. You do what less than 1% of men are going to do. You sit there for a while and you think, I have to work out where I am now so I know exactly how to get to where I'm going. So while your friend rushes off, you're sitting there, boat still, lapping in the water. And you think to yourself, I need to learn how to read stars. I need to learn how to use a goddamn sextant. And for those of you who don't know what a sextant is, it is not a tool for getting sex. Although in this case, it kind of is. But no, it's a tool for learning to read the stars. You learn to fight, like, get your navigation going uh, when you're on the water. So you learn to do that. You waste three days just sitting in the water, not going anywhere at all. But then you work out exactly where you are. And you make the 10-day journey to the Dominican Republic. You get to party it up with hot Caribbean women. Your mate gets to watch. And this is what happens over and over and over again. We don't know where we are. We don't know how we're going. And when we make a change, we rarely notice if it makes any difference. And here's the thing. When we go out, when any of you go out and try to work on getting better results with women, 
you are not capable of measuring, just using your intuition, a 20% improvement. It just doesn't happen. Let me give you a really good example. We take two men, Bob and Andrew. They decide, after approach doing 100 approaches, they decide that they're going to try a strategy of adding some teasing and humor into their interactions to try to improve the results. That seems like a pretty good strategy, as good as any other. So uh, Bob, he goes out, he approaches 100 girls, he gets some phone numbers, that's fine. Then Bob approaches 100 more, and he adds the playful teasing in there. He gets some phone numbers, and he makes out with a girl. Bob, that's a big change, right? Hey, a really better result that happened to any one of you. You're like, yes, I love teasing and humor. Teasing and humor is my new Bible. Most people don't have the experience like Bob. This is what happens to most people. Andrew approaches 100 girls. He gets some phone numbers. Then Bob, I should say Andrew. Then Andrew approaches 100 more girls and teases playfully. He gets more or less the same number of phone numbers. Do you think Andrew has learned anything important here? He hasn't, because nothing drastic changed. But the thing is, most of the positive improvements you'll make, not just with dating relationships, but in business, in learning an art form, is going to be small and incremental, not massive and obvious. You see, the real picture, if Andrew was measuring, would look like this. Well, Andrew approaches 100 girls. He gets 10 phone numbers. Then Andrew adds in teasing and humor. And he gets 13 phone numbers. Now, why wouldn't you notice this? Well, let's say Andrew approaches 10 girls a week for 10 weeks. It's one, girl, one phone number a week. At, one, at 13 phone numbers, that's 1.3 phone numbers a week. It's barely more than one. He's barely going to notice the variance. You're not going to see that change in results, but it's a 30% change. We're just not wired that way. We just don't notice the small incremental changes. But they add up. One thing. By the way, who here, who here, we had some show of hands before, who here wants to be better with business? Yes. And some of you, if you don't know this, you should learn this because this is how you make massive change because there's a compounding effect to small changes. Let's look at picking up women in a broader perspective. Let's say you know some statistics. Let's say right now, if you approach 100 girls, you walk up and you talk to 100 girls, and 20% of those approaches, you get a phone number. Of those, 40% of those turn into a date. And of those, 20% of those dates end in a makeout. If you knew that, then you'd know your results would be 1.6 makeouts per 100 approaches. It's not crazy great results. It's a result. Most of you are capable of that if you actually did 100 approaches. Most of you are capable of that. But here's the thing. Imagine if, imagine if we just use the theme of adding teasing and humor into all our interactions more effectively. So what we did was... coaching. He's also the founder of the School of Attraction, an NLP practitioner. Let's all welcome Damien Dika. What's up, man? Cheers, buddy. Yeah, yeah you, got you got it. it. All right. Clump them together into a system. And then you follow that system. You make it as simple as possible, but no simpler. And, you know, in shadow and stuff. And it's kind of romantic because you hear the waves lapping and see the city lights and stuff. And then I try to make out with it. That was the game plan. So in the beginning, this date was a little lumpy. I'd go on, comes to me. They're interested about me and what I do. In this case, I'm the salesman. Yeah, absolutely. And this is a system. And it's probably 10 times better than anything you guys are doing right now. Because one thing I know is that most guys have no strategy at all. So a strategy is better than no strategy. Cool. It's nice to meet you. I've got to go back to my, my girlfriends now. That's, that's, a, that's a sort of a very quick, snappy rundown of a woman's difficulty in dating. It's, women suffer just as much, if not more, than men with dating relationships. You guys may be surprised with that, but wow, the, 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 the pain that, that the women go through is no more or less than what I deal with with guys all the time.